for a few moments this morning on this Lord's Day from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 22, verses 31 and 32. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon. Behold, Satan had desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee, that thou, fail, thou faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brother. I better read verse 33 as well. And he said unto him, Lord, I am ready to go with thee, both into prison and to death. Let me read on. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest. He said unto him, them, when I sent you without purse and strength and shoes, lace ye anything, they said nothing. I'm going to stop right there. I want to talk about for a moment, what to do when Satan has his eye on you? What to do? And first of all, I want you to know he never take his eyes off you. This time, it's Peter whom the devil want to destroy. When you stand for God, the devil right then start creating him a new team. And he want you to fail. But isn't it good to know that you got somebody praying for you? Are y'all in here? Peter stood, when you read the scripture, in Job's shoes as the prime example of the righteous of his generation. He must pass Satan mustard. And I want you to know, dealing with that rascal, his heart. You can't reason with him. You can't hold a decent conversation with him. That rascal only wanted his way. Are y'all in the house? He's a complicated fella to deal with. When you think that you are moving up, he constantly putting blocks in your way. And you got to know how to deal with that rascal. Can I put it in a country way? He's a low down rascal. You can't reason with him, Corey. You, you can't, you can't, you can't hold a decent conversation with that rascal that got a name called Satan. He, when you, when you think that you are in the spirit, he want to put something before you to blind you. Satan wanted Peter crushed. Know this. 
Know this. Satan wants you and everything you love destroyed. I want you to know that now. Your dreams, your relationships, happiness, children, future, he wants to diminish. And I want to take a moment and look at some example of Peter this morning and see how God desires to mold us into Christ's likeness just like as he did with Peter. He was, he used, he used trials and all sorts of circumstances to do that. And you hear me talk about circumstances and trials all the time. Just because you're going through something, that don't mean it's bad. Sometime a few trials along the trail will make us take a good look at ourselves. Are y'all in here? The fact is that we all go through trials and difficulties. Jesus won peace that he will go through a testing period. Jesus believed that this process was necessary for Peter. Sometimes we need to go through some tough situations. I was told growing up, the best sense in the world is that bought sense. Listen what the scripture says. Listen what Jesus called it. Jesus called it a sifting like wheat. Look at verse 31. It says, And the Lord said, Nobody else, coming from the mouth of Jesus himself. He said, Simon, now he didn't call his name one time. He put some emphasis to it, Philip. He said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you that he may sift you as we. Satan desire is to sift you and me, that is, to separate us from God. Can I, can I talk about that? He don't like us having worship like we have it. He will plant Lord's in the minds of folks that that church on the corner keep up too much noise. They got dumb women dancing. Devil don't like that. But evidently they hadn't read what David said. Evidently they hadn't read first and second chronicles. Because when you know what God done for you, it's no harm to do a dance in the house 
of the law. 